Okay, so here we are in scene two of act five. This is the final scene of the play. And there's a lot that still has to happen. So this is another one of those scenes that really moves through a couple different stages. Um, you almost could imagine Shakespeare deciding to break this scene up into several, but he, he chooses to keep it as one long one. It kind of ends up having the effect of, of really being exhausting emotionally. Um, so, and maybe that's part of what he was going for. So it's, uh, the scene starts with just Hamlet and Horatio. And uh, remember last time we saw them, they were fighting over, uh, Hamlet was fighting with Laertes in the grave of Ophelia. Um, but now what's happening is uh, Hamlet is explaining to Horatio how he survived the trip to England um, without getting killed, right? I mean, how did he survive it? So he talks a little bit about what the voyage was like. Um, a couple things I want to identify here, especially in this scene, are the, the ways in which Hamlet's fatalism is emerging. This is something that we're going to talk about quite a bit in class. But look at what he sees, says here. There's a divinity that shapes our ends, rough hew them how we will, right? Th this is clearly a recognition by Hamlet that he's not completely in control of the destination of his life, right? We, we may rough hew our ends, meaning we sort of rough cut them. We, we make um, small changes, but ultimately, there's a kind of divinity in the universe that shapes our ends. Um, I'm going to identify several other occasions in this act when, uh, when Hamlet seems to be giving over to this sense of divine inevitability and tragic momentum that has now uh, taken over his life. Okay, So uh, this early part of the scene is really just details of uh, Hamlet's um, escape from the, uh, the death sentence that was to be enacted in England. We find out that he stole the letter from Rosencrantz and Guildenstern uh, and that he read the letter and that the letter had a very specific command. And the command was that Hamlet's head should be struck off upon arrival in England. Okay, so, the, uh, so Hamlet was sent to England with his escorts, Rosencrantz and, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, with the order that he should be executed. Um, and, you know, the, uh, basically that England should do this for Denmark as a sign of their goodwill towards each other, that, you know, England's king should do this for Denmark's king. Okay? Hamlet still has the letter. He says, look, I can show you the letter, because um, Horatio can't believe that something like this was... Uh, um, was instituted by the king, was commanded by the king. Um, but then Hamlet says, let me tell you how else I, uh, let me tell you what I did after I stole the letter. I wrote a new letter, okay? Um, and let me tell you the effect of what I wrote. Uh, and the effect was that England and Denmark are such good friends that as soon as uh, the king of England receives this letter, he should put those bearers to sudden death. The bearers of the letter should be put to sudden death, okay? And then the letter was sealed. Hamlet just so happened to have his father's signet. Um, that's, of course, the ring that you would use to press into the wax that, um, that would indicate who, uh, who uh, addressed and wrote the letter, okay? So Rosencrantz and Guildenstern never knew that the letter had been swapped. Um, and then the next day was when the uh, sea fight happened with the pirate ship that took Hamlet um, and brought him back to Denmark. And so, uh, and so that's the whole story, right? Um, Horatio's exclamation here, why, what a king is this, um, is really finally, I think, for Horatio, the, the recognition just to the full depths of the evil and moral corruption of King Claudius, right? Um, and Hamlet finally recognizes, look at all these things he's done, right? Uh, Claudius has killed my king. He's whored my mother. Um, he's popped in between the election and my hopes, meaning he's, uh, he's usurped me, right? I was supposed to be the one who would have been uh, elevated to the throne had it not been for Claudius. Um, and, uh, and so he's basically 
you know, trying to ruin my life. And then finally, he tried to have me killed. Okay? Um, so, the uh, Hamlet says then um, that in this, in this short time now, he says that, uh, he says to Horatio, I'm sorry, uh, to, uh, to Laertes, I forgot myself. Um, he wants to apologize, okay? For the, by the image of my cause, I see the portraiture of his. This is one of uh, Hamlet's first recognitions here, really, about the, um, the, the way in which he and Laertes are foils for each other, right? He sees um, Laertes facing the same challenge that Hamlet faced, right? A dead father um, and the, uh, the son's need for revenge, okay? So we're going to pause there. Um, because now Osric comes in and the scene takes a very different direction with the presence of Osric. Okay, so we'll stop right there. <laughs>